Hello everyone, uh, this video is going to be a screen capture of using the Photron high-speed video camera software. Um, so on this computer, you we have a, fo a folder set up as Photron camera setup files and if we open this, we see we have several setup files available where the trigger activated at the end, the trigger activated at the start, four partitions, five partitions, eight partitions. Um, so we might be interested in the trigger. Now, if you, if you double click and you open it, it looks like this, you get an error. You may have a couple of issues to look at. So the connections might be bad, so you might check the connections. The camera might be off for some reason, or it might be a firewall issue so if we open, I have a, down at the bottom, there's a, a pinned in the, uh, in the start menu, there's a pinned Windows Defender firewall with advanced security. And you can click Defender options and turn it off. And you want to make sure you turn that back on before you connect to the internet. So I have this uh, computer set up as in airplane mode at the moment. Um, so we don't have to worry about the internet. So if this happens, we're just going to turn it off and then we can uh, we can start up again and hopefully we'll see this progress bar and now we see the results from a high-speed camera. So what we're interested in is being able to record this, uh, this spark generator. And so I can zoom in with my uh, with my manual focusing lens and I will focus using the manual focusing ring. Now this is a fit view, I believe. So if we wanted to see the original size, we can zoom in a little bit. And then we could zoom in even more if we really wanted to look at being able to focus on that one, maybe we're interested in this one area right here most of most interest to us. Now, uh, this uh, is pretty good light. We can click fit and go back to the fit, maybe one and a half percent. This is set up at a frame rate of 500 frames per second. So to capture our spark, which uh, is going to be difficult, it's, it's quite fast, 500 frames a second isn't going to do it. So we might go up to our max full frame rate, which is 6,400 frames per second. And after we change the frame rate, we typically want to click on uh, shading. And so we're still doing pretty good with the light. If we didn't have this extra extra light on, we would be quite dark. Um, now, if we are in a darker situation and don't have an extra light, we can do a few things. There is a bit shift, and we can we can brighten brighten the image up. Uh, now you're causing some problems when you do that, and you can look in the user's manual uh, as to as to what that bit shift does specifically, but I have run some videos uh, with the, the bit shift turned up higher. We can uh, change, we can click this button and click and drag and modify uh, the brightness and the contrast. And then if we want to reset it, we can reset there. We can adjust the brightness directly and just brighten it up, uh, which will, you know, eventually just overexpose everything. We can adjust the contrast in the same way. I'm just clicking and holding and dragging. Uh, you can adjust the red, green, blue. Okay, I clearly don't remember what this button does. Check the user's manual. I don't remember what that does. We can do a color shift saturation on the saturation here. 
we can we can do different things. This is select area to save to clipboard and uh, rotate the image. Do a few different things. We can change the name here. It's there's a way to do it. I don't remember what it is right now. Uh, but if you check the user's manual, uh, this all of this information can be uh, changed, and so that when you create a file, this uh, this writing will show up. So you can put information into your into your video file. So this is our frame rate. Uh, you can go up to nine hundred thousand, obviously, but your number of pixels if we check that now we have a very small image and we don't have enough light to do this so uh, but full full frame the max we can do is 6400 now you can change your shutter speed uh, you can make the shutter speed faster than 1 over 6400 seconds if that is of use you can change the resolution this is full frame 1024 by 1024 we are using an end trigger for this, but if we wanted to, we could use a start or center or these other options. If we have a really low light situation, we can click this and it sort of really uh, boosts the, 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 the gain on the sensor. Now, if you have one part of this, of the, of the, one part of the view that is very bright and one part that is very dark or one part that is going to become very bright and then go dark again there is a way so to make the very bright part not become overexposed and i don't remember how to do it but if you contact the photon rep or you look in the user's manual they can tell you if that's something of interest i wrote it down in my notes when they came to show us how to set this up but I don't have that in front of me right now. Uh, the number of partitions, this is, you can choose it in camera options, you go to partition and you can increase the number of partitions. And obviously there's a limit. The, the camera has internal memory storage, so the more partitions you have, the shorter each record, the shorter the maximum length of each recording is going to be. And the faster you record, the uh, the shorter the maximum number of frames that you can record is going to be used up, obviously. So if we look at this right now, we have we're doing a six thousand four hundred frames per second. We can get three point four one seconds worth of recording done. So we have the trigger, this, no, that's not what I want to click. Trigger mode is set to end. So if I hit record, the buffer is going to fill. It's going to fill that 3.4 seconds and then continually fill. And then if I hit the, make the sparker go, and then I hit the, the thumb trigger button, it's going to save that partition. And now what we see, we've gone from the live view, which we were looking at before, it automatically clipped over to the, to the, uh, the save portion, and I can view what I'm looking at. So if I record this, we see uh, there's a spark that's generated periodically. And I might want to zoom in just to look at the spark. So maybe I don't need this whole three seconds because, so if I was to save this, if I click save and it's going to go to the desktop. Okay, that's fine. We pick a name, let's call this. So 
what I want to do is call this uh, spark generator. And then in the file, we'll call it test one. In the file, I want to tell, I like to tell the recording speed 6400. I might say recording 6400 frames per second. And then the playback rate, and then playback rate is 30 frames per second. And we see that down here. This is the, the playback rate speed. And if I click apply and save, we should have a progress bar come up. And we'll notice that it's gonna take 20, 20 ish minutes, maybe 15 minutes for this. Uh, to save the entire 21,841 frames. And so I might hit cancel. And maybe I only want to look at, I'm only interested in part of this. So I can, I can drag one side over, drag the other side over. And now I'm only going to save what's between the two the two sides here so between 11 0, 9, 6, and 9511 so i've got at least one spark in there maybe that's good enough and maybe i want to change the playback rate so instead of 30 frames a second maybe i want it to play back at 250 frames a second so it'll run a little faster if i really want to slow it down i can show you know, do something slower. And then if I click save, let's do, I would change this to five and then click apply and save. And now this won't take nearly as long. You know, now you're looking at one to two minutes instead of 15, which is nice. Also, if you, if you save the entire the entire memory width, it's going to be 40 to 60 gigabytes, so it creates very large files. Now this is, right now it's saving as an AVI. Uh, you can also okay, click save. I can change the format uh, to one of these. You can have it, you can set the playback speed here. Uh, if you didn't want to set it there. Um, so if you want to manipulate the files later, I believe you save it as an MRAW. And then it'll save each individual image as a Rather than creating a video that's one file, it'll create uh, each individual image will create it as a favorite picture file, and then you can manipulate each individual picture file or combine them as a video later if you want. If you have more than one partition, so right now this setup is one partition. We could change it to, let's say, four partitions. And I hit record. Now my buffer fills, I can only do 8.53 seconds at a time. And if I click the thumb trigger, it's gonna go to partition two and that partition is gonna fall. I can hit the thumb trigger and that partition will fill. I can thumb trigger again. I'll go to partition four. And if I, if I click four, it should automatically uh, stop the recording and go to the save window. And then we will have to save each partition individually. I wanted to contact Photron, the Photron rep, and ask if there was a way to automatically save each partition, but I haven't done that. So maybe there's a way, but right now, uh, we're saving each partition individually. If we go back to live, and let's say we only want to record the first two partitions, or it was set on three. Uh, I, would, I could click recording done, and then it'll, it'll, it'll 
take me over to the save, uh, the save location. If I want to open a file to modify or view something I've recorded before, I can do it from this file tab. I'm trying to think what else I wanted to show here. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. So that um, auto increment partition and stop recording to last partition, those are options. So if these aren't clicked, they won't automatically do that. So if you start from, if you just op open the Photron FastCam viewers, uh, software without using one of the pre-saved uh, setup files this uh, what I've shown happening over here when you click the trigger won't necessarily happen that was set up when we had the sales rep come and show us how to do it okay so So I would, you know, you might look at how to change this and then when you save your, your, when you save your files, I think it's a good idea to have the recording and playback rate information in the title. Often I'll also have a, a date tag, so I might put, uh, this is, 2018, the fifth month, and the second day. And then that will, you know, that's how I'll put in the, put in the date. Now this will add the date and time. It may, be, it may do it in the file name itself, but I tend to put it in myself. So that is, uh, that's, I believe that's everything I want to cover. So I hope you found this useful. Have a good day.